Wagab. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to upgrade your headlights to a projector style headlight. However, this isn't catered to the W203 alone. If you have a reflector style headlight and you want to upgrade it to a projector style headlight, this video is going to show you exactly how to do that. Coming up. So as you can see in the picture right now, this is what my headlight used to look like. As you can see, the low beam is a projector style headlight, but the high beam is just a reflector style headlight where it uses the shell of the headlight in order to reflect the beam and produce the light. But what I'm going to do now is change it to this. So as you can see right now, the high beam has now been changed to a projector style headlight. So now it is just like the low beam and it projects the light rather than using a reflector. This is the, the bulb I'm using here. This is a two inch by Xenon headlight. And like I said, this modification can be done to any type of headlight as long as you're trying to go from a reflector style headlight to a projector style headlight, regardless of the car model and make, and regardless of the light bulb type as well. My headlights are H7 at the moment and in order for me to switch to this projector style headlight, I had to go with a H1. But in the end, everything worked as you can see in the top picture right now and uh, I'm very happy with the outcome so I really want to share this with you guys so you're able to do a modification like this as well regardless of the car that you drive. If you watched the video previous to this one I show you guys how to remove the front bar and the headlight so in order to get to this point you need to remove your front bar and also your headlight so be sure to check out the video in the top right hand corner right now where I show you guys exactly how to remove the front bar and also remove the headlights. Then we can jump into this next step where I disassemble the headlight and I begin the modification to the high beam. Here we have the headlight removed. So I'm going to remove a couple of things that could uh, be damaged from heat. I'm going to remove the rubber bezel surround. There's five clips and once you remove them, your surrounding rubber bezel will come straight out like this. Okay. This clips in this way where it has this tab here. So you kind of just have to like push it down a bit and then push it forwards and then you have another clip here that is like this so you have to squeeze these together then push it out Let's now remove the clips that hold the headlight in place there's going to be five of them all I'm going to do is get a flat head in here and then pry it and it comes right off two three that one just flew but I'll pick it up in a second you can hold your hand like this so that it doesn't fly anywhere four here is the fifth one right here so we just pry it and I'm also going to remove my headlights as well because you know they don't need to be connected in order to heat it up I just like to do it so that the heat gets in all around easier and it will separate much easier as well put it inside some sort of box or cabinet that will allow you to trap heat and heat this up with a heat gun or even a hairdryer for about 15 minutes so that it will melt the sealant that seals the headlight. I'm just using a cheap little heat gun. I'm just going to use this on low heat for about 15 minutes and then we will come back and take apart the headlight. I simply point the heat gun into the box and I have sat the headlight on a towel so it acts as kind of like a heat deterrent and it doesn't melt the plastic. Alrighty, so we'll take it out now. This is also why I sit it on a towel. So when I take it out, I can take it out from the towel and it's not too hot because as you know, plastic heats up quite a bit. We can now begin to pry between the headlight and the plastic cover and it will begin to separate. I like to use this tool here because as you can see, it pries it apart. If you watch my W204 video on how to disassemble the headlight, you will see. I just begin to pry all around slowly it begins to come off we just work our way all the way around slowly prying it it comes off quite easily because now you've heated up the mastic that seals the headlight there you go as you can see it's beginning to separate now okay that's really hot still just watch out for all the bolts because the heat would have heated them up dramatically and it would be really hot any metal parts I'm just working it still, working it. I'm going to turn it upside down real quick. Okay, 
just keep working it. It's very hot all around it, so just be careful where you place your hands. Keep pulling it apart, guys, until you finally separate it like so. Okay, as you can see, it's beginning to separate. There we go. Now, with all this e extra mastic that they use to seal it, make sure you pry it and try not to get any of it on the chrome so you don't have to clean it off later. Okay, just pull it apart like that and begin to remove it. And it will pry apart like so. And all this extra mastic, break it with your screwdriver or some, whatever tool you have handy. Just break it apart so that it will separate. Okay? And keep doing it, keep separating it. Or you can even just use a a knife and cut it that would be easier but as you can see you really can just pull it apart and it comes apart quite easily because you've heated it up and heat is what softens the mastic so that you can separate the headlight okay headlight separated and we'll just grab a blade and we'll just cut what isn't separating because what's important is that you have managed to separate the leads the lens from the actual headlight okay so we'll just cut the remainder nice and easy don't cut don't cut yourself don't cut okay there we go that is your lens removed we'll set that aside the lens now with all this extra mastic you can use it again if you have enough left over if you don't you're gonna have to get some new mastic and apply some as you seal it. With that removed, what we need to do next is basically take apart the high beam. If you have a bulb in here, then you're gonna have to remove it. If you take a look inside here, you notice this reflector in there. We need to remove this so that our projector light can come through without any obstruction. And in order to remove this, we need to go on the inside. And just inside here, going to see just under the bulb housing there are two clips here okay and you need to pry them so that you can remove the center reflector you can just use your fingers just push it towards the center and do the same to the other side now you are no longer going to use this reflector as you are installing a projector beam and then once you have pried them to the center folded them over you can now come on this side and pull out the reflector the reflector in the center here goes inside this little gap here go on the other side of that and pry off whatever is holding this reflector and that was what i showed you and once you pry to the center you can pull this out and here we go how this clipped over was it simply inserts like so and then on the back of it all you had was these two prongs here that folded over like this just like that and that's what kept it in place so in order to remove it you need to get to these two pins and fold them to the center like so so that you can remove it we have our hole in order to install our projector lock now I'm going to show you what the reflector looks like. So this is how you get it. It comes disassembled, so I'll disassemble this quickly. These two screws just hold the surrounding bezel for the headlight. You take off these two screws and the surround for the headlight will come off, as you can see, just like that. And now you have this rubber piece that protects the reflector inside. So you have to install this so that it protects it when you install it. Now all I've done here in order to help hide this cable is wrapped it in some foil. But it's just normal foil. I'm pretty sure you could probably just use normal foil. But I used a heat resistant type of adhesive foil so that it could stick on the cable and it would stay. If you only have one headlight in your car, 
it would have to use it as a high beam and a low beam. These cables here control the motor here, which then opens and closes as you activate your high beam so that when you activate your high beam, it would drop the spring inside here. Therefore, project a high beam rather than just a low beam. Without connecting this to your high beam wires, it won't activate. So if you're just using it as a low beam, you won't have to connect these wires at all. This motor is basically your cutoff line. And that's why you have a metal plate in here. As you can see, there's a metal plate just in here that goes down whenever it is activated. When it's down, it is your high beam that reflects. And when it is up, you get that clear crisp cut line for your uh, low beam, therefore not blinding oncoming traffic. And I'm just going to show you, look in there. I'm gonna connect positive and negative. As you can see, it goes down. So that would be your high beam setting. If you're using it like I am, just as a high beam, this would need to be connected as soon as you turn on your high beam, meaning that you would need to connect it to your high beam power source. That way, as soon as it gets power, the motor will push down that plate and it will reflect high beam. There are adapters that come with this and it's basically for different types of headlights. You have them for H1s, H7s and H4s. So you have different adapters here. They all install the same way. You have this little groove at the top here that will then sit in the groove here. So if you have a H4, you would, you would install this. If you're using another H7, you would install this one right here. And you always have a groove at the top that tells you where it's supposed to sit. So according to what bulb you're using, that will dictate which one of these you're going to use. I've used these LED bulbs that fit really snug inside. So I'm not even going to use any of these because the bulb basically just sits flush and it sits really tight. So I've gone with not using it. It still works. That's how you would have to install it. So that's how you would install like a H1 bulb. And then you basically have this little screw nut and that sits over everything and screws onto this here. And that's what locks this projector beam inside here. The back of the projector light, this part here is slightly bigger than the hole for the light. So I'm gonna have to grind it out with like a Dremel like tool so that it is big enough in order to fit it. So I'm just gonna get this tool and just grind it out a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. It's just plastic so it will grind out real easily. Just a little bit guys, not too much. Alright, so I've lined it off just basically like a mill all the way around. We'll give it another trial fit and look at that. That is it coming through right now. to install it into the headlight and you just have to push these cables through this spot here the square or whichever spot you have that is free in order to install it once you get it on in make sure you pull it through make sure you install your rubber so that you do not scratch your headlight now we push it on through we grab our retainer now and we install it hold it in place Grab a tool, make sure you get it on. Seems like we're on really well. Now we just have to screw it on until it is tight. Before it gets really tight, make sure you have lined it up so that your light is sitting vertical and horizontal perfectly. That way when you turn on your light, it beams it out perfectly. However, you still can adjust it later on, but you want it as perfect as possible before you do all that, before you do any adjusting. Okay, so that's nice and tight now. As you can see right there, I've got the cable through the square hole at the bottom right here, 
and I have put on my retaining clip. Now we can trial fit our headlight. This is the headlight I'm going to use. It is all different depending on the type of headlight you use. In my particular case, I had to grind the headlight a little bit so that it would fit in. But if you went with something like a HID like this, it would fit in perfectly. I've got an LED bulb like this and I had to grind the bulb just a little bit so I could get it to fit and now it fits in perfectly without any retainers. Straighten up my headlight. I'm going to push in my light bulb. Perfect. As you can see, it sits in perfectly. It doesn't move at all. But to ensure that my light gets power whenever I turn on my high beams, I'm going to connect the wires from the motor of the projector light to the high beam wires. That way when I activate my high beams, it will get power to the motor and it will flick down, therefore projecting a high beam. So it's probably different how your uh, harness is, but in my case, all you have to do is pull back the tab here and then lift up your pin. So I'm going to solder the wire to these wires here so it's a permanent connection. It's just a really easy way for me to do it. So now that I've soldered the positive and negative for the motor to the positive and negative of the high beam power, I'm gonna put it back in the socket. Remember where your positive and negative went so that when you put it back in, it is right. Push it in and push it back down. And now we just clamp it back on. We can reinstall our bulbs. There's our parking light. Push that back in the right socket. We connect the positive and negative of our light. It was our white side and negative was the red side. And now we will install our light bulb. Light bulb in. Everything is now installed. If we look at the front now see that our parking light is in everything else now we'll just grab the air gun and we'll blow out all this excess dust make sure you do this guys we are done I'm only going to show you how to do one side because there's no point doing both sides as the um, procedure is exactly the same we're going to connect this back to the car and we will see how it looks. I've just roughly reinstalled it and now I'll turn on the car and we'll get a look at what this looks like fully completed. So as you can see right then, the high beam, it flicks on and off. Now you do not want that. You want it to stay on consistently. So what I'm going to do now is add a resistor and that will ensure that the high beam stays on all the time, consistently. You need a load resistor like this. The point of this load resistor is so that it keeps producing 12 volts to the headlight, the high beam. That way the high beam will always stay on. It really is really simple how you use it. We take out our high beam harness and we take out the pins from the headlight that goes to the harness. That now simply goes into here. So you follow the colors, positive to positive, negative to negative. Your positive and negative from the other side, which comes out of the load resistor, will now go into your plug harness. Make sure you've got them in the right way, positive to positive, negative to negative. It will now stay on. The light stays on consistently with our load resistor and without it, it would not do that. So that's why it's important that you get a load resistor. Another thing is that be very careful because these load resistors tend to get very hot. So you cannot install it inside your headlight because it will melt the plastic. So in order to get the load resistor plug to fit, you just have to go with the same thickness on one of these tools in my case it's 22 and just drill it out now our plug should fit in quite well there you go both of them
that's how you would get your load resistor to go through in terms of having to go back to factory you could simply just use like a rubber grommet and plug that in so that it covers this i'm pretty sure you can find a rubber grommet of this size somewhere 22 mil 24 mil and just plug it in and it will simply cover it with that same rubber grommet if you want it to seal it then all you'd have to do is cut a slit in it so that your wires could go through push the cable into the slit your grommet could seal it and your wires could still come through it's important that you install this on the outside as it gets very hot okay and well there you go guys the projector light completely installed into the projector style headlight for the w203 now remember this modification can be done to any type of headlight as long as your projector light can fit into the hole where your headlight comes into and even if it doesn't you can do exactly what i did and just grind it out a couple of mils and it will allow you to fit a projector headlight just like i have today what i'm going to do now i'm going to remelt the mastic that is surrounding the outer case and then reinstall our lens now if your lens is very dirty then this would be the time to clean it so you know just be sure you clean out all the dust inside your headlight wipe away any dust that could be inside your headlight like it is right now in my case because a clean lens cover will mean a brighter light just before we put the headlight back together grab a microfiber cloth a nice plush one so that you do not scratch the chrome clean the chrome of your headlight really well that way you don't have any fingerprint markings and anything like that Spray some iso alcohol on the microfiber cloth and simply clean the chrome area that you touched. That way it looks really nice again. Wipe it all, wipe the lens as well. Clean everything very well. We can now reheat this the way we did in the box and reinstall the lens to the headlight. And then we are pretty much done. Then it's just a matter of reassembling it, which is pretty straightforward. It's just reversal of removal. Bring this over to the box. We will heat it up so that all this mastic gets soft and we can reinstall the lens. The exact same thing that we did before. This time, try not to touch any part of your chrome. We'll sit it back on this towel again, push it in. We will begin to heat it again. Just like we did before. So now with the headlight, heat it up we can now remove it remember it's going to be very hot if for some reason the mastic around here hasn't melted enough you can always heat it up again quickly just hold the heat gun all the way around it will already be soft because you've already heated it up and you'll be able to see too when it gets soft because you'll see it start to melt and shine a little bit This is a time where you do not want to touch the chrome at all. Heat it, heat it. Heat it up all around. Even heat up the one on the actual lens. You want to make sure you do this properly because if you don't do it properly, you're not going to get that seal, that airtight seal that you want. With it all heated up, we can now put it all back together. All right. That looks about right. It's really soft now, so as you can see, it just pushes straight in. You see that? Look at that. It just pushes straight back in and seals. So make sure you've got it all the way around sealed properly. Push it all the way in. What I like to also use is a clamp like this. Get it where you can and push it in and clamp it. Clamp it there for a bit clamp it over here as you can see it's not completely sealed so let me get this clamp in and clamp it in so it seals take that off so as you can see it pulls it really close together at the bottom here it hasn't been clamped properly so just get it in there clamp it in here we go we'll do this part here
then I put my clips back on. So you grab your clips, you just want to put your clips back on, so it helps to hold it in place and it seals it. There's another here, okay, we just want to push it in and then put our clip back on so it seals it. So now we'll just reinstall this back in the car quickly and uh, give it another test run to make sure it's all fine. And remember guys, don't forget to reconnect your air hose. It simply just connects back to this part here. Uh, there is a little nipple on the end. You just have to push it in like this and turn it a little bit and it will connect back on. You'll hear a clip. Now just grab your connector harness for your headlight and push it back in until it clips. It only goes in one way guys, so make sure you push it in the right way. And this is our final result. Not too bad, not too bad at all. And that brings us to the end of the video guys well i really hope you found this video helpful and it helps you with your customization of your headlights and in regards to the modification itself you really can go about it any way you choose whether you use different types of parts and you go about it differently in the end you just have to customize it to the way that you want and what suits you and what works for you thanks very much for watching don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads. Until next time guys, this is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs. Signing off. See you in the next one.